ownership, right? My volunteers, right? I might do the same thing with them. Or I might um, ask them to, uh, you know, uh, to just kind of put it up on their web, my coders, to put it up on their website as a badge of honor that they're going to be programming on this platform, et cetera, et cetera. And throughout the year, you can essentially build an arc around your milestones that leads people to some desired outcome. So if at the end of the year, you want to get people to the point where they are going to be um, using your platform and funding your platform, you basically want to weave a narrative, a plot, an experience uh, for them that will bring them to that point, like someone writes a good book and at the end you're in tears, or at the end you're cracking up with laughter, or in the end you're feeling really good or ready to go be a hero, right? The, the same thing with your adventure. Um, the reason that we connect this to the internal side of things, meaning to the SWAT, the, the, the strengths and weaknesses on the, on the SWAT, is that this, this tool has the um, kind of uh, side benefit of ensuring that you are anticipating where your strengths and weaknesses have to be um, very, very carefully paid attention to. So if you know that you need to do a vote, an online voting thing, in order to get buy-in with, uh, with your coders, and you're very weak when it comes to technical expertise. Well, that's something that you want to be shoring up now and being ready to deploy when the time comes. You may say, you know what, I have two options to build buy-in. One of them is going to play on my strengths. One is going to play on my weaknesses. You may say, you know what, at this stage, it would, I don't have the, the, the time to fill in those weaknesses. I'm going to do this. But in general, the storyboarding out, the imagining the experience of your constituents and interacting with your, with your venture, with your products, is going to give them, uh, give you intelligence and insight and understanding of what you need to be doing to create those experiences to ultimately bring them to the point where they are giving you the value that you want. All right, does this does this make sense to you guys? The social star trainers, does this make sense to you guys? Jenny. Yes, except that I mean, how, are you going to show us formally like how we would apply those traits and weaknesses? Or no, I I, I I I'm not going to show. Well, one second. Actually, mm -hmm. let's let's do both. Laura, what are um, they similar? I was just saying. I think I would love not. to see, I don't know, like a fully executed plan of this because what you're saying is great. I'm not, or so to have an exercise to make because to show people like this stuff that you're doing. Yeah. So let's so we can actually play it out. Uh, let's play it out for one more constituent. I think we do. We have any any of these that are done, Shelby, from previous things? No, okay. Good. So. That's the first time I'm presenting this seminar, and I've actually never seen it presented. So <laughs> I would love to feedback after this, but um, the uh, it's a new addition to our to our curriculum. Um, it was just fun as well. The um, yes, yeah, so it, so in terms of applying strengths and weaknesses, it's more um, it, it's more that this this sort of planning gives you insight into what you need to actually do during the year in order to create the experiences you want, and then you can say, okay. To get this done, I actually need to um, to beef up a certain weakness that I've identified, right? Because the SWOT formally means listing out the various different strengths that you have and the different weaknesses. Remember, those are internal strengths and internal weaknesses. I am weak on tech. I am weak on um, organization. I am weak on um, market sensitivity. I don't have a market expert on my team. I am strong on my ability to sell. I am strong on my ability to plan. I'm strong on my ability to mobilize. And then you can kind of say, oh, wow, I really need to, by month four, have out a really powerful email news campaign. And I'm really weak on my uh, market writing. What am I going to do about that? Or, oh, I need to get something out by month two uh, that is um, you know, very visually and graphically oriented. I'm very strong on my graphic design. That's an area where we can really excel. And I don't need to worry about that. So it's more to provide you with the kind of a, a, a way to take those, that, those lists of strengths and weaknesses, which usually just sit on the slot, okay. and actually see it uh, as it might apply or or influence your your plan. Is that clear? Yeah, I think so. So we have we have all of our activities mapped out. Then we go through. And yeah. So you do your SWAT. You would actually How list out. How make this happen? Do I have the resources I need? Okay. Exactly. So you would list out your strengths and weaknesses, and that's something that that most people are comfortable doing. And the storyboarding gives you a, an ability to kind of play with an actual on-the-ground application of those strengths and weaknesses. Got it. Clear? Comments? Not yet. Okay. That almost makes sense, like, sequencing. I don't know if it's sequencing or it application, but it almost makes sense to do this, to do that, the tool, and then to take from that the plot and now. Uh-huh. I don't know if that would work as well, but it's... 
it's almost like it's hard to connect one to the other, so maybe doing this and sort of literally mapping it out mm-hmm. and then looking at the map to see, okay, where are my holes? Okay. Where are my, I don't know. Dan, comment? Why is this not in the project management? Uh, I think it was a little originally in the project. There's, there's something very similar to it in the project management. What we realized, and this is speaking again, let's get up on the balcony here. Um, for one of the challenges at this point in the game is for the fellows to actually spec out where they want to get to in the next six months or years with their venture or year with their venture. And so, um, and, and then how to think about: it. Do I have the resources in place? Is this realistic? Am I able to get there? Um, so this is th- that's why I was moved moved here. Um, and it, it forces them to really visualize the experience of the various different stakeholders. Also because most fellows at this point are also only thinking about usually one set of stakeholders. Either they're beneficiaries or they're obsessed with funders or whatever it is, and forcing them to say, here's my constituent, my funder stakeholders, my volunteer stakeholders, what are each of them going to experience as I hit all my milestones? In, in the context of strategy though, it's really only relevant as an answer to the question, is this doable, right? What, what do you mean? Like if you're, doing, you're saying you're doing a SWOT analysis, then you're looking at an implementation plan. No question is, is this implementation plan implementable? Yes, the, right. it, it helps It helps highlight, uh, it helps give them, doing this on the backdrop of SWOT gives them a very heightened sensitivity for what is realistic and what is what is possible, and then how to fill holes as they're trying to realize these experiences for the constituents. If, if it wasn't on the background of SWOT, what you'll see is everyone is kind of just out there making up plans and making it where they want to get to without any relationship to what they're actually strong and weak in. That's what we've seen. Mm-hmm. That's why it's there. Because we do get into the work breakdown structure in two more presentations. Right. Right. So this also just frame that I think it starts to get some thinking specifically about the resources within as a follow up to the previous workshop which or presentation rather which is working at what activities are necessary to lead us towards the final outcome. Yeah, technically it should like track their plan a little bit to their to the reality of their strengths and their weaknesses. Alright? So that's the that's the juxtaposition of SWAT in this tool. Um, and, and it is it's this is not analyzing what is my constituent gonna feel because of the economic change. That's that's different. I mean, this is internal things. What can I do to generate these experiences for these sorts of constituents? Right? Because our whole theory here from the first seminar and session is a narrative oriented theory. We are claiming that to mobilize people to become uh, champions for your vision, you ultimately have to engage them in, a, in, a, in an experience and in a story. Right? And it also helps if there's a lot of pain there that you're going to be able to solve. Right? Those are usually the two things that work pain and experience. Some of the words of a venture capitalist who teaches for us in Israel, named Michael Eisenberg, who teaches from Benchmark Capital. He says when he's looking at ventures, he's always looking for number one, are they, you know, are they uh, truly solving some sort of very intense pain that someone feels? Or, and the best is obviously and, but or are they providing a fantastic experience that people really crave and want? You can get both. If you're solving a pain with a great experience, then you have a real a real one. Alright? Um, okay, so again, this is a tool, and when you're teaching it, you're going to say, you know, let's go into this workshop, right? Break up into groups of three, all right? And take one person, one venture, right? Deb, Jenny, and Aria. Three ventures, we're going to take Deb, uh, Jenny's venture, right? Modern Tribe. We're going to pick one option for your business model, right? One idea of what gives value to, uh, what, you know, to your constituents. You know, pick your, your model. Right now, Jenny has a business model may evolve. At some point, but right now she has an existing business model where she is providing um, Judaica to people who pay her, and there's that exchange of value. Um, list a series of actions that need to happen for the model to prove itself, where you want to get to. Um, tell the story of it as a history, addressing the accomplishments. So get yourself in the future. Be two years in the future, almost like a history of a future exercise. And say, you know, uh, you know, three months ago we just hit our million dollar mark, um, and we've moved now. 500, you know, 500 items of Judaica a month. Um, the way we did that was we got to this because we developed this new new model, which was this, and we developed this piece of the platform. And we redid our graphic design. We hired three people, and all these milestones that happen along the way to success, right? And so you guys, as social starters, would be forcing fellows to say, "What is the successful point in the future?" Now, tell me what all the milestones were for you to have reached that that experience. And it, this is very difficult for them, right? They have a hard time talking that out. You have to force them to stick a, like, something in the sand of the future and then 
then take a rope backwards. Even if eventually they might change what success is. All right? Pick two different stakeholders you can cast as characters. So we're going to take the vendors and we're going to take the buyers of, of Jenny's Judaica. All right? We're going to list your de desired experience of each. What do you want those vendors to feel all throughout? You know, are they feeling engaged, excited? Are they going to give you more product for less money? What's, what's kind of the experience that you want them to feel? Same thing with your customers. And then you're going to list the, uh, you know, you're going to put it into this chart, right? You know, put it into this chart, right? Your major activities that we laid out, your milestones, um, your different characters, so vendors and then customers. And then here you're going to say, what's the experience of each of them as we get to this milestone? So when Jenny releases her new back end, what experience does she want her vendors to have? What now, vendors might get excited because they get to use it and it's, more, it's easier and it's more efficient and how does she create that experience, but customers. Customers generally don't know when there's a new backend. Well, how can she use that moment, that milestone, to give her customers the experience, the customers the experience she desires they have? And that's how you plan it out, right? Is that clear to you guys? Okay, and so this is a workshop. Um, if you have time, obviously, use another person. Now, for this workshop, um, what you want them to come out with really is, is forcing them to get out of their entrepreneur head, right? Because most entrepreneurs think that they know best. And that's the whole reason that they're entrepreneurs, because they have enough guts, they're stubborn enough to, you know, step out there and say, I know I can do it better than anyone else out there right now. This is forcing them to step into their stakeholder shoes throughout the experience of um, this venture and of this product. And that's very, very important for entrepreneurs. The stubbornness is what gets them to do it in the first place and what will help them through the hard days. The ability to step out of their own skin and sit in the skin of others is what will make them succeed. All right, so you want to push your fellows to do that. This is very hard for fellows from our experience um, in doing this sort of thing. Okay, so this is kind of a mid, uh, a break. Uh, now speaking kind of in the meta, this is a break in the um, workshop. You're going to come back and sum up that experience by basically saying to them, look, the, the, key, uh, the key for you to succeed is ultimately your ability to be flexible. You, you, if you hit an obstacle, right, many entrepreneurs tend to, when they hit their obstacle, get frustrated, feel bad about themselves, feel like they're not smart enough, feel like they didn't figure it out. If they can instead say, okay, what am I learning here? What do I want to see happen? How do I change my strengths and weaknesses and adjust them to fit the experience that I need people to have to mobilize them to do what I want them to do? Um, they will be able to, uh, to, to recover and get it back on their feet. Um, you're all going to be do moving soon into the experiment phase and the prototyping and assessing phase. That plays into this here, right? There's this concept of minimum viable product. You want to develop just enough product so that you can learn enough to innovate and make it even better. You don't want to invest all your resources into the first version of the product you have because by the time it gets out there and you realize it's wrong, you won't have any resources left yet to innovate. Right? So there's this kind of constant sense of you trying to figure out, have I developed enough to make it usable that I can learn enough to innovate it? All right? And that's an entrepreneur's mantra, the, the sort of mantra of the entrepreneur. Um, the best thing to do when it comes to um, storyboarding and when it comes to kind of visioning out is really to involve your stakeholders. So instead of you pretending to be your customer or you pretending to be uh, a funder, bring a funder into the room. Bring a customer into the room, though, especially those who, 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 are, who are really kind of excited about what you're doing, it turns your storyboarding into an event where you can create desired experiences, right? So you can put it in mind one, you're going to do storyboarding. How do you want your funders to feel? How do you want your volunteers to feel? Just bringing them into the room maybe generate that experience that you want. We've done this before, and storyboarding out with funders is a very powerful experience. You can kind of do a history of the future and say, okay, where do we want to be? And then kind of envision it backwards, how we got there, what those milestones are. Throw those milestones up in the top, um, in the top, uh, top slot, right? Right up here, uh, excuse me. Throw, the, throw them up here under the time frames, and then say, okay, we've got all these different characters that we want to have certain experiences. What do we want them to experience at different points? Then what are actions we can take to get them there, right? What emails need to be sent? What messaging needs to happen? Um, what sorts of, uh, Programs and gathering do we have? Okay, so this uh, for you guys as you're developing your ventures, key tools to keep in mind. You should set yourself a regular monthly check-in to review your storyboard, to do another SWOT analysis, see how what's changed in your strengths and weaknesses, and how you need to adjust your your plan for your constituents going forward. Any comments? Ah, um, yes. Is that Barack Obama? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's Barack Obama, the young guard, the, the young guard, right? Young guard, young blood. 